starts with public safety. And I'm just wondering how many people here have some connection to public safety in their community, whether it's the police or prosecution or are responsible for thinking about those issues? Okay, um, a couple of people here. Great. So what has happened in New York City has been really remarkable. Um, the New York City Police Department has really led the way, I think, in the United States with using technology to advance public safety, to advance quality of life, and to really be a smart city. They are the people who created the ComStat model of using technology to identify problem areas, problem people, problem issues, and then determining where to focus its resources. Um, back in 1990, there were 2,245 murders in New York City. Um, between 1990 and 2010, that murder rate had dropped by 77%. That number has been dropped down to 515 um, as of last year. In Manhattan, that number has dropped even um, by a larger rate, 86%. And there are lots and lots of reasons why that would happen. But what we realized is, as prosecutors, we need to think differently. You know, there's that law and order model on television that maybe it's shown around the world. Um, you know, there are two parts to the, um, to the public safety system. There's the police and the prosecutors. The police arrest and the prosecutors put people in jail. And that is true to some extent, but it's really an old model. So when District Attorney Cyrus Vance was elected and took office in 2010, he said we need to change that model. We need to have a model that's known as intelligence-driven prosecution. So he created a unit, of which I'm the chief, called the Crime Strategies Unit. And he said your goal, or your job, is not to prosecute cases anymore. You've done that for a very long time. You need to be thinking about what it takes to drive down crime. So it's not just the job of the police departments, but it is the job of the prosecutors to be thinking about how every prosecution is going to affect our citizens and our safety. So this unit is a unit of senior prosecutors who are using great ideas and technology. And so it's the technology that I'm going to focus on just briefly here. And it's a very micro impact of what it means to be part of a smart city. You know, the comment earlier about there are a lot of initiatives, I think, that make smart cities. I don't think there is necessarily one global um, idea or one global project. I think there are a lot of individual projects. And I think there are a lot of individual, before I was a, um, a prosecutor, I was a CPA. I was a, a um, an accountant, an auditor. So I liked, I understand the value of money. I know we're in really tight um, economic circumstances, so I'm a believer in doing things on the cheap. So what we have done at the Manhattan DA's office is to create systems that allow us to identify who it is who are drivers of the crimes. So we started with uh, talking to the police department and getting ourselves connected in ways that we've never been connected before. There are 8.2 million people who live in New York City. There are five different counties, five different elected pro um, prosecutors, district attorneys. We have 78 individual precincts. We have um, uh, housing police, we have transit police, we have 35,000 different police officers. The point of that is, prior to, I'd say, 18 months ago, we had no idea who we were prosecuting. People were being arrested who were the drivers of crime in our communities, and we didn't know it. In the Manhattan <coughs> District Attorney's Office, we have 450 different prosecutors. We are in two different buildings on multiple floors. Um, we have six different trial bureaus, 50 people in each of those trial bureaus who would prosecute a person that the um, colleague next door might be prosecuting someone who's connected to that particular person and there was no way to know that. So what we ended up doing was creating what we call an arrest alert system. Now in New York State and throughout the United States, and I assume this is the same in many other locations around the world, when you're arrested, you're fingerprinted. That fingerprint gives you a unique identification number. I have a fingerprint um, identification number. I was fingerprinted when I became an assistant district attorney. Many people around the world, for different reasons, are fingerprinted. But people who are arrested or are criminals are fingerprinted. And when they get arrested, the, the, their information is sent up to Albany, up here actually, just down the street. And then that information is kicked back to us here in, in Manhattan. So what we did is, by speaking to the police officers, we identified the people who were the gang members. We identified the people who were the leaders of the drug um, organizations. We identified the people who were running the, um, the guns. 
We identified people who we ha had information that they had shot people. We identified the people, obviously, who were uncooperative witnesses, not the grandmothers in the window, but the fellow gangbangers who were connected with the people who were driving the crime. And we put those NICID numbers, those identification numbers, into a database. And now any time anybody gets arrested in any of the five counties, so anyone out of the 8.2 million people, if they are in our arrest alert system because we have identified them as people who are driving crime, we can and do respond to that. And 